<clears throat> okay, Sucker Punch. In this movie, you will get to see women fight giant robot samurais, steam-powered clockwork Nazi zombies, uh, goblins, a dragon, as well as lots of bizarre uh, mechanized robots. Now, of course, this begins with, like, the first six minutes, there's actually no dialogue. You know, it, it's pretty much you're a little bit of voiceover and then the song Sweet Dreams, which again is another really weird cover. <clears throat> as the main character, Joel, you know, as, as Baby Doll, gets to find out that her mother is dead and that her and her sister are now in the care of her stepfather, who then proceeds to kind of go in the direction he's going to rape them. That then leads to Baby Doll sneaking out, getting a gun, coming back, confronting her stepfather, accidentally killing her younger sister, and then being committed to an insane asylum. While in said insane asylum, <clears throat> she finds she can go into these weird dreamlike states where she's told to get five objects. A key, a file, oh, a map, a key, um, here's oh, this is the wrong order, but we'll go. So you map, fire, knife, and a key. And the fifth object is something entirely different, and you have to figure out that, figure what that is, what that is for yourself. So in the first number, they get in the map. You know, well, actually, in her very, very first number, she doesn't even get anything. It's just her learning of her quest and then fighting the giant robotic samurais. And then when she gets together with some of the other girls, that's what forms the central group. They start going through some of the other things, like fighting the steam-powered, clockwork Nazi zombies. That's what she gets the map, and it's... It is done in this, re you know, the action is done in this really bizarre, all over-the-top sort of action style. And it is done very much in these action Schneider fashion, where you'll see people flipping through the air, it'll slow down, then speed up. So the action is done in a really, really well. The story connecting them about the girls trying to break themselves free of an insane asylum that also has them dancing like showgirls. And then you find out later how all that makes sense. When I was done watching my set to live my life and I was like, I, I was sure if I liked it. I thought the action sequences were done fantastically well. You know, the the ideas of you know, essentially flying like like an airplane and shooting in a castle full of, you know, goblins and then getting two magical crystals when you hit them, they're going to be this giant fire effect and then, you know, battling a, a dragon was just ridiculously over the top. I kept on thinking, this movie is a movie that would have been phenomenal to have seen in 3D. But when there's no action sequence and they're trying to do the move the, the story along in the non-dream action orientated spots, it's It doesn't really seem to flow as well. Sometimes I feel like I'm watching music videos because they'll do almost like a full song while they're doing something. And that way I can tell how most of the thoughts movie is very disjointed. It, it does seem like it's an excuse to do, you know, women in over the top action sequences and then string it together with trying to escape an insane asylum because apparently when Baby Doll dances, that's when they go into the dream state and fight all the weird, crazy, over-the-top stuff. And then with the overarching thing of people have guardian angels, you won't know who they are, and then at the end of the, the very end of the story, it's like, the person who makes all the decisions and all the choices and decides who you live for and what's worth dying for is you. But while it's a really great message, it gets kind of lost in the whole you know, I'm going to go into like a dream-like state and while that's going on you know, I'm fighting this huge over-the-top bizarre sequence of events while this is going on from my character's perspective in the real world someone's just, you know, taking the knife off of a fat cook. It goes to show that while I think Snyder can do a good job when he has source material when it was done it's like directed, produced, story by, you know, and everything was done by Zack Snyder, it's it was over the top and it felt like it really needed somebody else to kind of tighten script just a little bit. 
J just a little bit. You know, the action was done fantastic. But then again, Zack Snyder can do action. The moments when there wasn't action, they tried to actually act from scene to scene. I've never seen Vanessa Hutchins act before, and I can still say I haven't. That that's where it kind of went kind of south in some of those spots. Action very well. Moving the the plot from action scene to action scene didn't didn't go so well. And in some ways, it was very unexpected in the way that it was done. So the title entirely makes sense. And at the end of the day, I say that there's more things that I enjoyed that I didn't like. The action sequences, there's there's plenty of them. They're good. They're over the top. They're ridiculous. They're what you expect from Zack Schneider. You know, those were done really well. The the story element from the, in the beginning part and the end part were done well, but the little sections in the middle could have definitely used probably a little bit better acting. So probably a, a meteor story for those spots and probably some better acting. But beyond that, all in all, I'll say this was a fairly enjoyable movie.